Hi there, I'm Mensa Kamarke, and welcome to another episode of The Method. I'm here with good friend. I yes. think we can't even do this without Kiki and your love. I've been on it for um, quite a minute. Yeah. Um, and as you guys often ask, like, where do we get our designers? Where do we pull from? Do we purchase for Wendy? How do we pull the closet together? I'm giving you a peek behind the process of how we meet these people. These people that become the big names, the Mark Jacobs, the the Michael Kors of the world had to start somewhere. When you read those stories and and who picked them up, who was their first buyer, let's rewind to the very beginning and meet a young fledgling designer at the start of his career. Well, is it, is it the start? It, it, it's, it's the start. It's, it's still a, brand new. Brand new. Yeah. Now, I've known Mateo for at least eight years, nine years. <laughs> let's, let's not put a, no, let's no, not put a no. number around it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I have seen him hustle, I've seen him grind, and I think that there's no truer acknowledgement of that than being chosen for the CBFF Fashion Fund. Yes. The CBFF being the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund, and he's one of the 10 finalists. So that means they look over all your notes, that means they look over your, your product. Product, your stockist where you're sold, your editorial feature and placements, it's, yeah, it's a whole combination of the brand and the business in its entirety. How many years has the CVF been around, Fashion Fund? It's been, I think this is the 14th year, if my memory serves me correct. So the CVF, the um, CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund is a competition that was started to kind of find young fledgling talents across all genres. Basically there's clothing, there's accessories. accessories. What else? Uh, menswear, women's women's wear. wear. And just finding that young fledgling talent combining them, putting them through their paces, through a series of challenges, what have you, um, and then it's funny seeing how the challenges have morphed throughout the time now, the yes. Instagram challenge, what have you, I saw yours, which is fantastic. It's funny. Um, but I think that what it is, kind of just trying to test out and see who is ready to make it up to the next level and be, um, join the big leagues, and the fact that you even get chosen for it is a, a, an accomplishment. A complete so, honour as well. So to suddenly then be one of the ten finalists who then get the picture in Vogue is <laughs> with Carly Class no less. Check it out. November. Yes, in this month. How was that? I know it was incredible. I mean, she's she's a professional. She knows how to work. Uh, and I just seeing herself in Vogue, you know, as my mom texted me the, the other day, she says, you're in Vogue. That says it all. It says a lot. It says a lot. Okay, so let's hop in straight into it. Tell me a bit of your background. So I'm from Montego Bay, Jamaica. I went to an all-boy Anglican high school. And after high school, my mom sent me abroad to go to the university here. I finished my degree in hotel management, started my master's, and then I was still unhappy. So I was like, what is my true passion? What is my true calling? I moved to New York. I was modeling, and I was trying to figure myself out. When did you move to New York? 2007. That's a long time. Um, and then I just fell in love with jewelry. Started going to the jewelry district. Um, asking questions, reading books. I mean, YouTube played quite a bit of it as well. Mm -hmm. I was watching how to macrame a bracelet on YouTube. And then I started my own brand. I started making men's jewelry first, and then Rihanna wore a piece. Okay. And from Rihanna wore a piece, then the momentum started. Everyone won a full collection. When did you start your brand? The brand was started in 2009. That's yeah. my first collection was March of 2009. Yeah. I think it's funny when people see the, like, we're obviously referring to you as a new fledgling designer, and again, when you talk of years in the business, you perhaps are. But at the end of the day, it's funny how an overnight success takes nine, eight, nine long years. years well, well you know, yeah, yeah. because I only made men's, yeah. I felt like the larger audience didn't know about the brand. Mm -hmm. So when we shut the company down and relaunched into Mateo, New York, that's when people started hearing about the brand and the features in Vogue and French Vogue and all the you know, all the international Vogues and L and all those magazines. It's really just. Off. When's the first time you knew you wanted to be a designer? Well, being a little gay Jamaican boy, I think that all, there's some part within me that always knew I wanted to be a, a designer. My mom was a seamstress, okay. so I would watch her sew clothes and sew the uniform kid, you know, the uniform for the kids in the neighborhood. So I always had this inkling that I was going to do something creative. It was just finding that outlet and that start. Mm -hmm. For me, it's amazing seeing you translate. There's a certain effortlessness in it ease to your style that comes across in your pieces. How do you translate your heritage and all that you've gone through to your design? Well, m my DNA or my motto for the brand is simplicity and minimalism. And if I make something and you can't wear it, mm -hmm. then I'm not going to make it. Um, and 
Jamaica shows up in my work in the, in the, in the most subtle ways. For example, her, her flag is black, green, and gold. So mm -hmm. I use a lot of onyx and a lot of malachite. And then gold is just gold. Yeah. So I, I tie in my culture and my heritage into the jewelry. I think that's important. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, I'm Jamaican no matter where I live or where I go. There you go. Yeah. Right, perfect. Tell me about the pearls and what drew you to all these pearls for this season. Well, I'm a Gemini. So, so am I! I know. Exactly. <laughs> um, pearls is a birthstone. So I wanted to do something that, again, was personal. What I do, I make great personal jewelry at yeah. affordable luxury prices. So I wanted to bring in my birthstone, and I'm fortunate enough where it's pearls. So we took beautiful cultured and freshwater pearls, and I used some South Sea pearls as well. And pearls have just become our best seller. I think we're known for pearls now. Um, so that's what I, I just love the lost of pearl and how it looks amazing with just yellow gold. What I love about your piece is the fact that pearls can sometimes come across fussy. Or and also old, old, you know, old, old school, old maiden. Um, we put the train in front of Madame and suddenly she's like, oh, no. get this old lady jewelry. Oh, really? Yeah. But with this, she loved it immediately. And, and you saw the outfit we put her in. It was simple denim and it was smattering of pearls and the pearl pants. But the fantastic bit was the jewelry was what we wanted to highlight, and she immediately loved everything that we put in front of her. In fact, it's hard to have her choose which one to wear. Oh, but amazing! We loved what she wore. I hope you did too. I was ecstatic. What do you think about dressing women like Wendy? Um, first of all, I watch Wendy every morning. I, I'm, an, I'm an addict. I was just I was telling her I was watching um, Keisha from Gucci Mane. Yes, on oh, Keisha. Keisha. Yeah, she's Jamaican as well. Um, that's the kind of woman I want to dress. She's an everyday woman, mm -hmm. you know, she's relatable. Yes. She's also just naturally beautiful. That's the woman I want to cater to, you know. She wants to get up and she wants to be herself. You know, my jewelry, again, we're not making pretentious jewelry. Mm -hmm. We're making just great jewelry that just blends and molds and just falls and lay and become a part of you. Yeah. So Wendy's the perfect Mateo customer. Um, who would you like to outfit to, or have your pieces on that hasn't worn them yet? God, the list is long. You know, I'm just starting out. I would love to dress like Nicole Kidman and Halle Berry, like the A-list of the A-list, you know? Yeah, um, start at the top. Right, you know, yeah. most of, right now we have a lot of young girls like um, Zendaya or one of her new heirs from Spring. I would love to dress more young, hip, cool girls and also just like an older clientele as well as mm -hmm. Ali and Nicole. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think the pieces have such a wide range. Yes. So it literally fits anyone there. All right, so well, who's your greatest style inspiration? God, I'm obsessed. Just one. Just one? Okay, I'm going to say Grace Jones off the bat. <laughs> I've always been obsessed with her. I mean, I think she's she's, a, she's iconic. Iconic. Yeah. That scene from View to a Kill where she jumps off the Eiffel Tower. I mean, just her just singing My Jamaican Guy. I mean, just all of it. Exactly. I mean, it's weird. <laughs> you can throw a dog to pick an air style moment. Yeah. That Instagrams this weekend. Glad I didn't make it to air. Alright. <laughs> so, how do you start your day? My day starts at 4 a.m. 4? 4. I mean, can't start that early, we've got morning. Well, I live in Luxembourg. I don't know if anyone truly knows that. <laughs> you see why we do this? There's stuff that I didn't even know. Yes, yeah, so I live in Luxembourg. You live where? I live in Luxembourg for the past two and a half years. Fantastic. So, when I see you on the streets, often that's how can you come back before? Yeah. Well, because of the competition, I'm here much more. But for the past, I grew the business from Luxembourg. This is how we now sell to Colette in Paris and all these stores in Europe. Because I was there fostering those relationships and really growing them. Um, I met someone, and that's why I live in Luxembourg. Nice life, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so then you start 4 a.m. So my day starts at 4 because my partner goes to work, so I normally just call him and wish him a great day. And then I'm doing, you know, Russian press and doing French press mm -hmm. and doing Italian press. Mm -hmm. And then around 9 a.m. I start on American press as well. Do you have a PR? I have a celebrity PR, Crop Group, who okay, handles perfect. all the PR. And I have an incredible assistant, she's off today. Um, but we have a little team going. That's fantastic. But my day starts at 4 a.m. and I work non-stop. Wow, well, coffee? Not really a coffee drinker, more of a tea guy. You know, Island. We don't, we don't really don't coffee drinkers. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. we don't really <laughs> coffee drinkers. The breakout moment of a designer, you actually touched upon it earlier. The breakout moment as a designer for you was? I would say Rihanna. Okay. People started noticing the pieces and they wanted to know more about the brand. And she wore it when it was a menswear piece? Or wore it when it was men's. Men's, yeah. I mean, she's such a trendsetter. Yeah. I think the idea of those rules, it's kind of what I've said to you guys before. Trends, chuck them out the window. The idea of crossing, obviously, you want to wear a men's pants, you want to wear a women's blouse. If it suits you and you 
across the genders and do yeah. what they need to do in order to make it look good. And I think that she's such a, a trendsetter, and and she obviously shone a bit of her light on you. So several times. So beyond <laughs> grateful, like I ran into the stylist in Paris, uh, Melo mm -hmm. You know him. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just like, I was just saying thank you so much for like just requesting the pieces and having her wear it. And it, it took us from you know nowhere to somewhere. It is amazing to see what the influence yeah. of someone like that can do. Um, okay, what advice would you give to someone who is trying to follow in your footsteps and wants to break into the industry? I would, three things. I would say, ensure it's your true passion, research and study and master the craft, and then be patient and persistent. What would you have done if you hadn't been a designer? I would have probably move back to Jamaica and manage a bread and be breakfast or a hotel. My first degree is in hotel management, so. Yeah, that's not going to happen. You can still do that. Later, I have a plan. I have a plan for okay, the 10-year plan. Let's get this, let's and get this sorted out first. I'm going to open a restaurant. That's all I'm going to do next. Where? In Luxembourg? Think I'm thinking maybe, maybe in New York. I'm going to call it Home by Matteo. And it's going to be homemade food. I want to make peasant food. So huge food. communal tables, fresh bread on the table. Where everybody's like breaking the bread. I'm serving oxtail. I'm serving curry chicken, curry goat. Go? Oh, I can slay in the kitchen. <laughs> I really could. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to call the restaurant home. It's all, it, it has always been. Does anybody know this? Can we put this out there? Yeah, you can. My mom knows. We've been, she, and before we started, this, she's like, why don't you open a little. Oh, well, I, you know, I studied culinary too when I did my degree. Like Cordon Bleu just, trend. Just a Jamaican. Exactly. You know a million million jobs. Yeah, 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 a million jobs <laughs> a world. Okay, let's get back to the focus of which you're <laughs> here for, which is the jewelry. And let's get into the bags. How long have you been doing the bags? So the bags, when I opened the store, the street is called Elizabeth Street. So we, um, my mom said, let's do a bag that's a chic lady bag. And why not, why not call it Elizabeth? So, gathering a few no, please. Um, <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> so we did the first bag and her name was Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And I'm obsessed with Queen Elizabeth because I'm Jamaican. And she always has a lady bag. So we wanted to start with an iconic shape and an iconic bag. And that's how we started with the handbags. I went to Italy, I went to Mostrato, and I got really amazing leather. I mean, it even smells, oh, no, it smells it's incredible. It's um, but all the bags were handmade in Portugal. If you look on my website, you see the girls in Portugal sitting down, hand stitching, hand cutting. What's your website? MateoNewYork.com. Um, you can do that with me. <laughs> <laughs> No, so it's a really beautiful and a well-made bag. And we're launching them at Barney's so this, in yes, December. Okay. So this is super, super major. Um, it's my first bag out of the gate. Mm -hmm. um, this one is new for spring. Okay. Her name is Madeline. And everyone loves it. It's already in Elle magazine for December. Um, and some incredible placements. But you can actually shop it now on Modo Operandi. What's the price on this? This is only $4.95. And it's a full leather bag. There's leather interior, leather exterior, it's all fine Napa leather. And this is five ninety five. And we have a few other options and the prices. And then this one since it's here. She is eleven fifty. She. She. <laughs> she. It's Elizabeth. <laughs> you know, this is fantastic. Um, okay, so then I think the last question I have for you, we could do this all day, quite frankly, but the last question I have for you is what about the industry do you hope to change? think that Ooh. being part of this competition obviously there's something you bring to the market that's different and that people have, have decided to include you in on but what do you hope to now make sure changes going forward? As always I think diversity is of utmost importance you know many times I walk into a room I'm the only black guy mm -hmm. and I think that's sad because there are so many other great creatives that are black or just people of color, um, that's what I would love to change, you know. Sometimes, I mean, I'm never uncomfortable, <laughs> but I, I would love to walk into the room with more black designers that are doing incredible work. Yeah, I think, listen, just you being here and you being a beacon, there's going to be so many people, whether Jamaican or otherwise, that yeah. are probably mm -hmm. seeing that picture of uh, that picture of you and Carly Plus, just that alone, because I'm a connoisseur of magazines, and was pulled into this whole industry by just Thumb through the pages of magazines. That image there, the idea of you, the designer, first of all, you look, I, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you look goddamn amazing. My but team. just the idea that you have a, a multi hyphenate Jamaican 
is and you're going to be inspirational to so many other people, women from Jamaican descent a lot. Thank you. I'm so insanely proud of you. I think the idea that you are in the competition, yes, but just the idea of the way you've conducted yourself throughout all these years, I think there's an idea of what the black design should be and there's a certain urban and these certain pockets that you you are placed in and the fact that you have managed to just skip across all of that effortlessly I might add and so chicly and so elegantly. Um, so I think that for me hats off, kudos to you and this is well good luck to the best of the Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, hopefully you come out the winner.